What's up folks, I'm Private Hudson and today we're going to be taking a look at Kessen for the PlayStation 2. Kessen was one of the 29 games available for the PlayStation 2 when it launched in North America on October 26, 2000. It's a strategy game developed by Koei and, strangely enough, published by Electronic Arts instead of Koei themselves. Unlike other Koei games, Kessen has, surprisingly, high production values. It has good graphics for the time, particularly the animations during the game's numerous battle scenes, and being able to display many units on screen at the same time with little performance issues. Also, it has very good English voice acting. I mean, we're up to, what, Dynasty Warriors 9 at this point, and they still can't get good English voice acting right, but they were able to pull it off here 20 years ago. Anyway, Kessen takes place at the end of the Sengoku period in Japan. The game's manual and the intro FMV do a good job summarizing the history and political climate at the time. To summarize things quickly, there was a daimyo named Oda Nobunaga who almost unified Japan. He was betrayed by one of his closest generals and forced to commit seppuku. One of his other generals, Toyotomi Hideyoshi, took over and managed to unify Japan, but he had larger ambitions and wanted to take over all of Asia. He died in 1598 after failing to take over Korea for the second time. This led to a power struggle between Tokugawa Ieyasu, who was a daimyo and buddy of Nobunaga since the good old days, and Ishida Mitsunari, who took control of the Toyotomi armies since Hideyoshi's heir, Hideyori, was only around 7 or 8 years old at the time and was obviously too young to assume power. Lots of pro Toyotomi generals were weakened due to their losses in Korea, while others had issues with Mitsunari himself, so they decided to join up with Iyasu instead. This led to the Battle of Sekigahara, in which the Tokugawa forces won, and eventually Iyasu took control over all of Japan and became the first shogun of the Tokugawa shogunate. Alright, that was quite a mouthful, now let's talk about the actual game itself. Kessen is a cinematic strategy game that reenacts that battle and others around the time in a dramatized way. You first play as the Eastern Tokugawa forces and follow the path of history. There is an initial skirmish between the two armies, which leads to the Battle of Sekigahara. Winning this battle continues the path of history where Iyasu crushes the rest of the Toyotomi loyalists and consolidates his own power. Sadly, this campaign is ridiculously easy and half of it is a tutorial. There are six battles in total, three of them are minor skirmishes while the other three are major battles and in those you can decide which generals accompany you, their troop types and formations, which enemy generals you'd like to try to have defect to your side or try to have them sit out of the battle, as well as the overall army strategy. However, it isn't until you're halfway through the campaign do you get full control. And even then, as the game is explaining to you how to change troop types and battle plans, it tells you that it has already picked the best ones for you and you don't need to change anything. Um, what? Yeah, you basically just sit back and watch the game as if it were a movie, and that kind of was the intention of the creator, Ko Shibusawa. When you start the game, you get a message from him saying something along the lines of, him always wanting to make a movie based on this time period, but he felt too constrained by cinema, so he decided to make a game instead. This is why Kessen is extremely cinematic, to the point where it kind of gets unbearable. You see, for every single order that you give, there is a cutscene. Don't get me wrong, when you order a special attack, these cutscenes look pretty damn cool. Dozens of units are on screen at the same time, and the only special attacks that result in slowdown are the triple barrage and the cannonade. The orchestral music in the background and the general shouting attack orders greatly intensify the atmosphere. However, a cutscene plays out for literally everything. Give a general an order to move for two steps. Cutscene plays where he either agrees to follow the command, protest it, or outright refuse it. General routed, cutscene plays. Duel, cutscene. Hell, sometimes when a general enters a battle, a cutscene plays where he does a little dance with his spear. These get old very, very quickly. When you complete the Eastern Tokugawa campaign, you unlock the Western Toyotomi one, where you control the forces of Ishida Mitsunari. This campaign is slightly harder, and there's finally no more hand-holding, but the strategy elements are still extremely limited. You have no control over how many soldiers are assigned to each general, those are all preset and can never be modified. 
While you can control the troop types they have, each general already has skills that lean them towards a specific type of troop. For example, if a general has the special skills Spearwall and Volley, giving him anything other than Spearmen and Bowmen is a waste. Formations also don't seem to have any actual effect on anything other than providing a numerical bonus to the number of times a particular special attack can be performed. Most of the officers for the battle are already picked for you, and most cannot be substituted. The ones that can usually don't have great replacements available. An important thing to note is that a general's stats is usually more important than the number of troops that they have. For example, Iyasu's son, Hide Tada, has the same amount of troops that he has, 10,000. However, his stats are garbage, so he's fairly useless in a one-on-one -on -one confrontation. The preferred strategy anyway is to surround larger units with smaller ones. This increases army morale and zeal, and whenever a unit's zeal is above 80, you can use a special attack which will further whittle down the larger army. One last thing when it comes to generals is their bias. If you're playing as the Western Army, you definitely don't want to bring any Eastern Loyalists with you to battle as they'll probably refuse your orders or even worse, defect to the other side. This makes the Western campaign harder as Ishida's generals are less loyal to him, but since you've already finished the Tokugawa campaign, you already know who's going to betray you at Sekigahara, so you can simply place those generals on the front line which will force them to fight anyway, which makes this battle a walk in the park. Completing both campaigns allows you to see your battle history as both sides, it also allows you to replay either campaign, and when you replay them, it finally gives you the option of selecting a difficulty level between 1 and 5, with 1 being the easiest and 5 being the hardest. At difficulty level 4, you no longer see the number of troops that an enemy general has or their formation until you engage them in combat. The enemy is also tougher and uses special attacks the moment one of their units gets over 80 zeal. At difficulty level 5, you no longer see the general's bias concerning their loyalty. Now with the added difficulty, you now might actually lose a battle. And the interesting thing about Kessen is that losing a battle does not result in a game over. The game continues. There are several branching paths for both sides, with the Battle of Sekigahara being the starting point for these. But while I've had the patience and interest to see every single battle, win or loss, and story variation when I first played this game around 18 years ago, I, I don't have that level of patience or interest now. This game hasn't aged very well. Having to spend around 10 hours finishing the initial game as both sides just to unlock a difficulty slider so that you can replay the same game with an actual challenge is a bit ridiculous and asks way too much from a player. And even then, the game doesn't remain that challenging as the best strategy is to have all your forces stand still. On higher difficulties, the enemies will do the same, but since the victory condition is either defeating the enemy commander or having fewer casualties than the enemy forces, you can simply have one unit go out and use a cannonade attack on an enemy unit. Since the enemy will now have more casualties than you, it'll force them to send out some of their troops to fight to not lose by default. And you can just sit still, wait for them to get in range for more attacks, and surround them once the fighting has finally been initiated. You don't have finely tuned controls of your own troops either. When you give them a move or an attack command, they'll do it in whatever way they can. So trying to position a unit to stay out of a fight, but be in range to deliver a barrage is extremely tedious, especially since you'll be spammed with cutscenes every single time an order is given. Now you can actually skip these cutscenes by pressing triangle, and this took me about 8 hours to realize after every other single button on the controller didn't do anything, but this causes the number of casualties during the attack to disappear almost immediately, so you don't really get to see how much damage was dealt. This also causes a bug when it comes to pursuing routed enemies, as it cancels the pursuit itself and allows the enemy to escape and reform. There isn't much to the combat anyway, there isn't your usual rock-paper-scissors format. Foot soldiers are pretty much only good against other foot soldiers. Mounted troops destroy all foot soldiers apart from spearmen, Bowmen's volley attacks are useless against everything, while ninja troops destroy every single troop in the game and have no weaknesses whatsoever. Generals also have minimal development between battles, their stats never go up, so it doesn't really matter if they survive or get routed, 
but if they do survive a battle, some predetermined generals get an increase to the number of times they can use a special ability, even if they didn't fight anyone at all. This doesn't really matter either, since some of the characters just die off or don't participate in the next battle. Kessen does a great job of introducing some characters. When you play as the West, you feel that Mitsunari is justified in his fight against the Eastern forces, as he's putting down a rebellion. When you play as the East, you also feel justified, as the men who join you tell their stories of how one guy's Christian wife asked to be killed by her own guards, as she doesn't believe in suicide since she's a Christian but she had to prevent herself from being captured by Mitsunari. And another general was telling a story of how his castle was raided. And Iyasu himself sees a vision of Mufasa telling Simba, uh, 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 I'm sorry, a vision of Nobunaga telling him that he's the one who is destined to rule the land. But then five missions into the Eastern Campaign, all of a sudden two of my closest generals are replaced by their sons who look exactly like them. The, this makes sense historically since they were already dead at that point in time but it is never explained in the context of the game. And at the last level in the Eastern Campaign, you get this badass general, Date Masamune, who has one eye, uses cavalry troops with muskets, but you literally get him for just that one single level. And if you're playing on a harder difficulty, he doesn't even follow any of your orders. One thing that I should bring up regarding progression is that on my first playthrough as Tokugawa, I had one of the enemy generals, Ban, defect to my side. This was late in the campaign. On my second playthrough as Tokugawa, I already had access to him and could deploy him at the Battle of Sekigahara. Obviously, generals who are central to their faction story will remain there, but I thought it was neat that this non-essential general was still available to me at a subsequent playthrough. I have mixed feelings about Kessen. Every time I load it up, I get excited, I get immersed in the orchestral soundtrack and the cool visuals, but then I Remember how the game pretends to be deep by giving you all of these options when it comes to troop type, formation, battle strategy, but in the end, none of them really matter as in actuality the strategy aspect of the game is paper thin. Unless otherwise stated, when I review a console game I use an authentic copy on original hardware. Kessen is pretty cheap, you can find it complete for around 8 to 10 dollars. And this video was recorded using HD Retrovision component cables hooked up to an OSSC. If you're trying to play through an OSSC, you might run into issues as I did. There were times when I lost signal for a few seconds, but it always came back shortly after. It's not a huge issue, and it doesn't even happen if you're playing on a CRT, but I just felt like pointing this out in case anyone plans on playing this through an OSSC as well. Last thing I want to say is that I greatly prefer the Tokugawa army because they have better hats. I mean, take a look at the West. They have Anko, who doesn't even wear a hat. Alright folks, that's the end of this video. If you liked it and want to see more videos like this one, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. See you folks next time.